pretty good sets tonight, but you know what I want to talk about, Voltage? What? I want to talk about brackets. I want to talk about how we got here. How so did we a, get here? That, that's a very good question. Let's go ahead and take a look over at where the brackets are. So, just waiting for the uh, stream <laughs> to catch up. All right, over in Champions East, no real surprises overall. I uh, We saw earlier tonight... St. Clair versus Potomac in a 3-0 St. Clair. No surprises. Very, very strong team during the season. Yeah, solid play from both teams, but St. Clair definitely edging them out every chance and every opportunity they had. And with that in mind, we're still going to see number one Durham against Nichols College, but Durham has been an indomitable force in the champions, the number one. These are the team that everybody has their eyes on. So I'm fully expecting to see them against St. Clair in the finals, but I am more than open to an upset. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to be able to see them. I think that's match. No, that's not match seven of today. I definitely thought that was later in the day that we were going to see them off stream match going on between number one Durham and number four Nichols college and the East champions. So then we go on to challengers here and we just watched that game of HCC against UA who they're able to edge out. And then on the other side of that bracket is going to be NTC beating Champlain college. And that's the finals for your East challengers NTC going up against Howard as I look for another bracket to go over the next one. NTC against Howard should be a pretty interesting set. They've played against each other before, but I think that NTC has basically gone completely undefeated. Howard Community College, their sole loss during the season was to NTC, so we're going to have to see if the curse can be broken, if we can finally change destiny, change fate. Yeah, definitely what we're looking for there if you're Howard and a fan of Howard, but uh NTC's a strong team and a solid team in that division. Take a look at Emergent. Let's see where uh let's see what we've got coming up for them. Wonderful. So I think it's gonna be Sunny Oswego playing uh So we had actually SUNY Oswego played against Mount St. Mary's. They lost to them yesterday off stream. We've got a lot of these matches that happen off stream. They're going to be going up against the winner between Bryant and Hood. I think Mount St. Mary's is possibly the first major upset we've seen in these uh, in these semifinals brackets as the number four seed has a chance of taking it all. Yeah, definitely an opportunity there. SUNY Oswego uh, unexpectedly... Uh, just not able to beat Mount St. Mary, which is incredible. The biggest upset, the only upset that we've really seen in any of these Rocket League tournaments that I've noticed. Right, usually Rocket League is something that uh, when you've got a wide gap of skill or even when you've got like a seed, you're going to expect them to play out in a pretty similar manner. But we we've talked enough about East. Let's go ahead and take a look over to the other coast. Specifically, I want to talk about Champions. We've got UAH is going to be playing against number four, Northern Kentucky, coming up sometime soon. And that should be a pretty solid opportunity. Again, no surprises. We've got seeds one, two, three, and four moving into the semifinals. But Boise State and Lincoln Land, that's one that you got to keep an eye out for. Both high performing teams. Yeah, I've loved watching Lincoln Land. They're such a high action team, a lot of fun. Haven't had the opportunity to watch as much uh, Boise State. So uh, looking forward to watch that as they are the number two going up against the Lincoln Land number three. And so hopefully we can uh, see some some fun action in the West Championship division. I honestly wish that we'd had the opportunity to have like an interregional event because I would love to see a show match between Boise State and Durham. I think I feel like that would just be phenomenal. Yeah, Durham is such a fun team to watch. They're 
I've been I've been watching them every chance that I have, you casting them last season, and then when they're on stream here, as this is my first casting time of uh, this whole season, this time. So I've been watching them a lot, and I love watching that team. Fantastic teamwork, fantastic uh, mechanics, and just solid play of Rocket League. So that would be a lot of fun to watch those two teams go at it. Okay, let's go ahead and step one more division down. We're going to stay on the West Coast, though. I want to go far away from where I am, you know, someplace sunnier. We're going to talk about challengers. So once again, one, two, three, four. This is a story that we've seen all, all, <laughs> all season long. We've got uh, number one seed is MBU going up against CMU Green. And that's actually what we're going to be seeing in just a few minutes here live on stream. Yeah, it's live. It's interesting. No, definitely excited about this one. Then on the other side of the bracket, it's going to be number two, Boise State, going up against number three, CSUDH. California State University, Dominguez Hills, really a fun team to watch. Haven't watched as much Boise State on the other side, just haven't caught their streams as often. So it should be a close one, a fun one to watch. Very excited to see the winner of those two games teams play each other on the 26th, as that's going to be, I believe, the later game of the finals here in Rocket League. All right, and one last set in terms of the brackets, in terms of, you know, where we're going, we have the Emergence West. So a little more of the foundational league that we've got here going on. We're going, we've already seen Kansas Wesleyan take out number four seed Ottawa. They are in the finals. That is locked in. But then we're going to be seeing Fresno State and Carroll battling it out for the honor of matching against Kansas Wesleyan. Yeah, that's whoever wins this game. It's going to be a battle for you because KW is just a solid team in that emergent division. And overall, it's it's going to be an uphill battle, but it's going to be a fun to fun one to watch. You've got to keep an eye out on the NECC. A lot of this action is something that you cannot miss. If you blink, you might miss it. You know, it might you at least might miss a goal, but stay tuned. We're going to be back with Misery Baptist against Central Methodist University Green. And that is going to be in the Challengers division on the West Coast. So stay tuned. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
Welcome back to NECC Rocket League. I promised you action, and we are definitely going to deliver tonight. Missouri Baptist versus CMU Green coming up here in the Challengers. I'm sorry, the uh, yeah, the Challengers West division. Tell me about this a little bit, Voltage. What do you think is going to be the main pace behind this game? Well, I mean, we just watched the East Challengers quarter, or, or sorry, semi semifinals. Now we're watching the West Challengers semifinals. I really think that we're going to have a similar pace, but we're seeing the number one going against the number four here, as opposed to the game that we just watched. It's going to be the two versus the three. So there might be a little bit more substantial difference between the skill of these two teams, but there might not. They are in the same division. They are at towards the top of their bracket or at the top of their bracket. Uh, so I'm really excited to see this, but definitely a, uh, a solid place. Anybody in the Challengers division is going to be able to keep up with the pace of play of uh, just about anybody else. It's going to be a quick game. All right. So one of the things that, you know, people talk about a lot is NA versus EU. And everyone's like, NA is so good. They can beat up EU all the time. Their Rocket League is just so good. And then EU fans are just like, yeah, but we've been winning nonstop for how long? Right. So. Do you think there's a difference in terms of U.S. East and U.S. West in terms of play style? Not that I noticed, but I'm sure there is. I'm sure that they've developed their own eccentricities, um, but nothing that I've specifically noticed being a mostly any East player. Okay, uh, that's that's perfectly fair, because I also think that like the play style differences in Rocket League and like the kind of like I don't want to say meta, but I, I want to say the like general ideas, the big brain stuff is pretty solid and closed. Everybody knows how to play the game at this point. We've had it out for years and years, and there's not a whole lot of like need to do the crazy high level strategic stuff. Uh, no, there's definitely not that need, especially at this level. We're looking at uh, low GC, high champ, mostly in this uh, challengers division. Um, you're really, you're still, you have the ability to do it when it comes, becomes necessary, but you're mostly looking for your solid fundamental plays. Like I was talking about your team rotation, your chemistry, um, how quickly you can get back on defense, how well your boost management is. We're looking at the top end of the fun fundamentals. It's the kind of things that you can be coached on as a player, but when it comes to like a full team coaching, the kind of thing that a team usually is able to identify the strategic level of play. Sometimes you just get a completely different idea or you need a kick in the butt, but overall you usually know why you're making the mistakes that you are, unless you're just completely out there in left field when it comes to the headspace in the game. So I think that we're going to have a pretty similar concept of game as what we had on the East Coast. But here, Missouri Baptist, CMU Green, going to be two really fast teams. Will we see another upset? I hope so. I mean, nothing against uh, Missouri Baptist, but I just like to see upsets. I mean, who doesn't want to root for an under underdog? That's a fair point. All right, five minutes on the clock. We already got the action firing away. Mokolov off the sidewall, trying to defend this out for CMU. But Stooley is doing a great job so far of just knocking this one around. Trying to keep this in the midfield. Looks like they're going to have a big shot opportunity. Not yet. Stooley is getting that one way north of target. Tendo putting Tendo. it just inside that first post. But a great challenge there from Blue Phoenix. Doesn't let Roadrunner get comfortable as Tendo goes back from boost. Takes it up on his sidewall here and is trying to find Blue Phoenix in midfield. Able to do it, but Mocha able to challenge early there, and I really like that play from him. I'm already seeing a little bit of difference in play overall, but Blue Phoenix catching that one in barely in the shooting lane, pummels it into the top corner. Yeah, Blue Phoenix is a, a name that I believe I remember from first season. Solid player and uh, definitely one to look out for here. But overall, I feel like the pace of play is a little bit different from the East. I feel like the level in which you're getting the cleaner touches is happening a bit more frequently. But that could all be just be Stooley coming away with a monstrous touch. 
Yes, Dooley, high flying double tap, really showing that razzle dazzle as we were talking about last game. Throwing a my bad in chat, uh, just well performed here from him. But overall, though, I feel like this is a little bit faster, a little bit cleaner of play than we saw last time. Bob getting the counter strike at least, catching the mid rotation. Bob saying, y'all are sleeping on CMU over here. Let me show you what we're all about. Finding open nets and putting them right down the center. I wonder if there's a bit of, I'm just taking a look at some of the titles and everything. We've got a uh, GC tournament winner. We think that's a low SSL tournament winner from season one on MBU, but just a diamond tournament winner on CMU. So I'm wondering if that might be a bit of a skill mismatch or it's also possibly a sign of development over the last couple of Rocket League seasons. Yeah, season two diamond tournament winner. Uh, Mocha, if you ever need somebody to run those, I'm in those constantly. I'm not leaving those for a very long time. Uh, but at the same time, SSL is a, a very high rank and difficult to get to, but being able to win one of those tournaments, you've really got to show your stuff as Blue Phoenix showing him his stuff on the left side of the field. Just a solid shot to an open net. Mocha Love not able to get back to that one. And it's going to be a quick 3-1 beginning for MBU. MPU definitely feeling like the more mechanical team. Definitely feeling like they're already in position. Oh, no. A whiff off the yeah, sidewall leads to a kickoff goal. Tendo wave dashing himself as a celebration. Just a great kickoff there, beating him solidly. And uh, a lucky angle, I suppose. All right, I'm going to go ahead and walk back anything that I might have said about an upset. I am definitely convinced for MBU here. This team looks fast. They look flawless. They look absolutely untouchable. Oh, as a miss pass there, Stooley trying to put it mid, not able to do so. Bob pinching it from the corner. Nobody up except for Bob. AZ Roadrunner catches this one on his car, bringing it forward, trying to flick Tendo. Tendo says, no, sir, and puts one in himself. Ladies and gentlemen, the clinic from the side of MBU coming out early. What does CMU need to do to stop that? They need to find their grip. They need to rotate cleaner. They need to start playing a shorter game. So thinking less about the follow-up from the 50-50 in the offensive play and starting to just get in and get behind their own players because they're losing these 50s. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you. They, they're they losing 50s just at that's base skill level, uh, car control level, but if they find a way to work with their team, one person be ready for a pass, one person to be ready for the uh, loss in a 50, you're really going to have a better situation as a great attempt from a bump play almost results in a goal from CMU Green here, but on the other side of the, uh, the field, Tendo trying to find a pass, not able to do so, and almost on, on net would be, I believe that was the shot from Bob. Trying to attack here. Getting a good one off the ceiling. Tendo's already there, though, and MBU just firing away relentlessly. Downfield out to Tendo again, already receiving a Blue Phoenix in position. Just barely off target, a little bit east of the net. Tendo out to his teammate once again. Stoli's just going to start the aggression, beating one defender, chasing. Tendo is there. What a save by Roadrunner. Uh, Tendo backpasses, then turns around without even trying to play defense and almost puts that one as a solid redirected net. Not able to do so, but it was fun to watch for sure. This team turns the entire the entire pitch into a shooting gallery so far. I have not seen anywhere that is safe for CMU to have the ball. No, definitely solid, solid plays from MBU. Solid foundation like we were talking about. Able to hit the ball with power anywhere on the net or anywhere on the field, excuse me, finding your teammates for uh, great plays as a team. And uh, fundamentals is what we were talking about before the game started. And I think that's what they're really displaying here. Definitely. They're just everything is so fast. Everything is so crisp. It's not even a matter of the fancy flip reset, double musty, whatever. We saw a couple of double taps, but all that st stuff that you just have to do during a game anyways. Blue Phoenix gets to that ball so quick rising up to it, double tapping that out of the air as well, starting the air dribble. Stooley is just rotating back, catching up on this immediately. These, This team is everywhere. Oh yeah, they're they're so spread out, but at the same time, 
in the right place to support their the t the player that's on the ball currently. It's it's actually quite incredible for the diamond one and a half like I am to be watching. But so far, MBU definitely the dominant pace, definitely the dominant team, both mechanically and rotationally here. They're going to close this one out. 6-1 in striking range of the Brazil. Yeah, do they try for it or do they just say, ah, 6-1's good enough for this game one. Let's move on to game two. Semifinals. This is semifinals. Make it quick, make it painless. Let's move on to the next game is what I'd be thinking if I was on MBU. You know, you don't need to get the extra time on the kickoff. I just want to move on to the next game, keep the momentum going. But, you know, there is the Brazil. Just saying, is, is it's it an worth the memes? The, the memes or the momentum, Voltage? That's the question. Uh, I mean, everybody's going for the clout nowadays, right? Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Here we are. Game one goes to MBU. And uh, CMU definitely had some moments of control and teamwork with Bob putting one away. Roadrunner, two saves, the only two saves from his team. And uh, how many, six shots on net there from CMU, which you definitely wouldn't expect that number as we've got f uh, four saves on the side of MBU and then nine shots. Six six shots versus nine shots. You, In my mind, it was one shot versus 20 shots, but CMU definitely putting the numbers on the scoreboard that you want to see. We just need a few more of those to connect and to uh, have a few more saves on the board. Overall, this is kind of the big idea I like to talk about in terms of like stretching a defense and the way that pressure actually works. You can have the ball in the enemy's side of the field for however long you want to, but it doesn't actually turn into pressure unless you're doing a good job of forcing them to react to what you're doing. Even though MBU had nine shots, it felt like 20 because they're just constantly all over it. They're constantly playing fast and turning everything into a potential credible threat. They've shown you they can shoot from anywhere. Oh yeah, they've they've established that tenfold at this point. So CMU has to change their mindset, CMU Greens, excuse me, to say, okay, we're going to focus on playing a defensive game and we're going to find those opportunities where they're like, all right, guys, we've taken 15 shots on them and they've saved every one of them. Let's get fancy with it. And they overcommit or they double commit and you've got to find a way to settle it back down after playing some solid defense, low boost, and just really fighting for that save every time. And then turning around and going to score an easy goal. That's, that's the mindset I think they have to take with this. I think that the best opportunity for CMU, and this is not an easy task, they need to find a way of keeping the ball grounded when they have room. They need to make these slower plays when they get room, but they're never getting that room to play around with. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've got room now, but he hits it out to Roadrunner, who gets bumped by Stooley, and just then followed up, gets the flip reset from the ceiling. Oh, what a play. This is what I was talking about. Bob, finish this. Stooley there. But a great a opportunity. Little bit, a little bit too chaotic, a little bit too fast. They just have to play this more catch and control game, I think, on CMU to be able to have a shot at it. That's where most of their opportunities have been coming from. But instead, a midfield shot from Blue Phoenix. Once again, everywhere's a threat. Yeah, I, I would rather have Bob there rotate far post, but then you've got two people trying to challenge right in front of the net and uh, having their third, uh, I believe, Mocha Love uh, rushing back to try to save it. Oh, Blue Phoenix. Over to Tendo. Gets beat by Mocha Love. What a play there. Trying to stop the Razzle and the Dazzle. And Bob has an opportunity. Oh, just misses, but Roadrunner puts it away. We got a 1-1 game, ladies and gentlemen. What a fake. That's what I'm talking about. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to beat them to the ball. Yes, that's a play on a rotation and a two-on-one, but it's still just about, you know, controlling the space that you have, slowing the play down, taking control. That's when CMU's coming away with these goals. When they have to play fast, when they have to contest in the air, when they have to burn all of their boosts, they're getting beaten. Yeah, what a play there from the Tendo in the corner using the angle as a little jump and a way to get a little bit more distance to the net on the ball. Tendo getting a little redirect over to Blue Phoenix who puts it off the corner, but he's got two players going back for the same boost. And Blue Phoenix having to play 
Kind of a solo game here, but Mocha Love's going to be able to bang that one out to Bob. Not able to. Stooley shuts that down, but Mocha's still there. And great 50 in front of their own net. Blue Phoenix has to get this out, but undefended, he will be able to do that. Roadrunner demo Stooley here. Bob from his right wall gets challenged by Blue Phoenix. Mocha has to come out of his own net. Solid defense here from CMU so far. And uh, a great physical play as Bob showing his mechanical prowess, saying you're not the only one that can carry the ball and able to do so very well. Starting up that counter attack from CMU. I, I like the, adap the adaptation that CMU is bringing out here. They're, like I said, slowing it down, trying to play a little bit more temperance, but oh no, the double commit on low boost. That's a disaster. That's an interesting play there, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. As one of my favorite movie quotes ever, the double fake comes out from CMU and uh, just the miscommunication there. That one hurts to see an absolutely brutal yeah, turn of events in a game that was looking pretty solid for CMU. I mean, compared to the first game, this is still looking very solid as Bob tries to become the GC SSL that he is at his, in his heart. That was such a great attempt from him and almost on net unless the defender wasn't there. All clear from CMU, breaking apart some of that pressure, but oh my lord, that tip. There's nobody up for CMU and MBU instead just going to start taking this downfield in a very deterministic, determined, and patient manner. Uh, a, little bit, a couple of uncharacteristic misses and now the pressure's up. Oh my lord, that redirect from AZ Roadrunner. AZ Roadrunner coming out here saying, meet, meet, putting that one in the goal. Wow, what an angle. That was classy. That was classic. That was clinical. Yeah, AZ Roadrunner turning the NBU team into Wiley e. Coyote and just really outsmarting them at, at that play right there. You got to stop buying your goalies from Acme. <laughs> True story, though. Here we are, Tendo pushing it out to Roadrunner, who oh, no. is able to put it in when I thought Tendo was like, no, no, that's, let's make a harder shot. But he decided to leave it for his teammate, realizing they were tied at two. Yeah, a solid backflip there to break away from the ball. It just had all the angles covered. No one there for the side of CMU to defend this. MBU still in control, but I feel so much better about CMU's prospects after this game in particular. I feel like they understand the matchup now. I feel like they understand themselves. And now it's just a matter of execution. Yeah, I think game one is almost always going to go to the more mechanically inclined team. But games two and on can go either way as long as they can adapt. And I think that's exactly what CMU is doing here. You trying to cut off that adaptation almost in on net. A demo from Roadrunner. Keeping that one away for now. Bob starting to dribble. Hotly contested. And there's the challenge from Stooley. Stooley out to the MBU or to the CMU corner. Pops this one up high. Good challenge from Mocha Love getting that one away. But MBU is still keeping the pressure on. That defense has been stretched to its limit and finally manages to get the ball away for a moment. Bob, where did you come from? As Bob flies from the ceiling to get that challenge on the defensive end, not a uh, a play that you see too often, but a very well executed one at that. Yeah, CMU Bob desperate for a goal, last 10 seconds. Trying Bob to turn downfield. Bob's definitely the most mechanically inclined one on CMU as we see a great pass out to Mocha Love who almost puts it on net. AZ Roadrunner trying to find a way to keep the ball in the air, but Stooley says, I will do it for you guys. I got it. Rule zero, you always got to be a little bit charitable. That zero second timer supersedes any hopes of winning when it comes to the culture of Rocket League. Yeah, so, it may not be meta, but it's definitely required. <laughs> Voltage, this game felt a lot better for CMU, but I still think that they've got a lot to work on. Can you talk to me about some of what it is that you need to see CMU doing to have a chance in game three? Um, definitely just teamwork. We saw individual plays uh, from Roadrunner getting their first goal and then 
uh, Bob with a great assist on the second one. But as a whole, rotating, continuing pressure, that's what I want to see in the next step. I want to see the continued pressure or continued defense as a whole. Just keep the rotation going and really get in, get in a groove of communicating with your team. I can definitely agree with that. And I think that uh, a lot of these longer plays from CMU have really stretched themselves to the limit, whereas MBU is really thriving on that. That's how they won game one in such a commanding fashion, was just these long, repeated barrages of shots that made them look like this team with eight players on it. All right, here we are. Game number three, MBU up two games to none. Are we going to see a sweep or are we going to see game or CMU get their first win? I want to see this go to four, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is going to be a sweep. I think that MBU is just a little bit too strong here. And it's already looking that way. Stooley breaks around a defender. Ball out to the corner by Bob Tendo trying to knock this one in. A little bit of Moco nice team play Bob so far. There's that connection you were looking for. Yeah, but it's that continued connection, being able to realize that you're getting in that challenge and, and trying to find a pass before they get too close and maybe not one directly at the net that they're expecting. Oh, a bit of whiffing action. Bob playing the slow, very low on boost, but gets the flick around one, trying to steal the boost out from this one, gets it, but the ball goes the way of MBU. Still can't get out of their own territory, though. Here we go, good clear. And Mocha with a great 50 on his side of the field. And Tendo almost putting that one away as he's not able to and decides to bring it back to his own side of the field. Great catch there from Bob. Tendo once again pushing the aggression. He is the one to start it off here every time in this game number three. You know, looking at MBU's style of play here, I'm noticing them being very willing to do back passes if they feel like they're being pressured. Yeah, that's Tendo. something this game you could definitely benefit from in my opinion but you've just got to have this game sense that is so high to be able to realize that as Stooley with the self pass off the corner curve I lied that was from Mocha I do apologize hey, you don't gotta apologize that's it if nothing else you've got to have Mocha apologize for that one he thought that was a safe clear and it's just a perfect setup for Stooley yeah Stooley with a great finish there Mocha up, or sorry, Roadrunner up early to challenge. There's Mocha up to challenge, and just they're getting up to the ball so much quicker than they were in game one as Bob ties it up once again. It's just they're up so quick on both of those, and then Bob's first one up and just uh, right down the center shot. It's There's nothing at that point MBU could have done once he made contact with that. Right, CMU, they, they get these goals on the counterattack. They get these goals in, like, the open net and these big plays where you catch them off-tempo. And that's one of the things that CMU is doing a great job of doing in this set when they don't have these grounded shots, when they don't have the uh, big control. And Mokolov going to be looking for another ripping shot, not enough power behind it. But this might be a setup, a little bit of bump action. No, not a shot on it. Just coming up a little bit too far north of the ball. Blue Phoenix with a catch, tries to flick it, unable to. Bob avoids the demo and gets the clear as he leaves it for Mocha. And what a great fake. Bob taking CMU to, to, to oh man. CMU Take taking the, the lead. Bob yeah, absolutely takes insane. him to the cleaners. That was disgusting. I just watched it again, and I'm not sure exactly what happened. I was incredible there from Bob as CMU takes the lead for the first time in the series in game number three as we see them slowly adapting and being able to play against this quick, high-octane team that is MBU. Oh, what a shot from Mocha Love as Tendo has to come off the back wall to save that. AZ Roadrunner up quicker than anybody else. They're getting quicker in the air. Better with their fakes. Just intense play here from CMU as Tendo's trying to make a counterattack. And MBU hasn't been down in the series yet, and I wonder how they're going to respond and what changes they're going to make. Yeah, if MBU starts uh, losing this one, oh, almost getting the goal there a little bit too wide from Tendo. But 
if MBU starts collapsing under this pressure, that would be just an entirely different perspective of them than I've had during the series. I felt like they're untouchable, I felt like they're indomitable, but instead, they're starting to lose a little bit of that momentum. Nice yeah, fake from Stooley. Great fake. Great mind oh, single like, my friend. Stooley trying oh. to find a passing play over to Tendo, not able to do so, but Blue Phoenix reads the pass out from CMU. Stooley with a great play off the wall and reads the bounce off the post himself. What is this play off the wall as he's able to get a wall pinch clear but turn it into a shot? I haven't seen that one yet. The wall pinch, he just peels it off the wall, recognizes the bounce, and just gets a uh, half volley, basically, but at a perfect angle and follow-up. That is some high-level play. Stooley's going to do it again! He's about to do it again! Uh, didn't get the solid double touch, but he was there for it. Yeah, definitely able to read that angle, which is about 10 times better than I would be able to do. <laughs> Stooley back, trying to find his teammate on the wall. Tendo, not able to pre-flip out there. Phoenix with a great rotation in the right play, letting Bob fly past the ball, but Mocha says, I'm not flying past anything. Is that an own goal? That is a, not an I own goal, but a pass. Uh, no, that was an own goal. No, oh, no, no, Mocha Love came and slammed that in. Mocha Love, yeah. yeah. I, the first mistake, really, that we've seen on the side of MBU. Yeah, they may have not been in the right place at the right time for the first, the other two goals. But at the same time, that was a mistake that led to a goal specifically. So first one we've seen out of MBU. Great save there from Stooley. And he's up first, but gets beat by Mocha Love. And CMU, was, they just got on. They weren't warm. That They fooled us in game number one. We weren't ready. I wasn't ready. I don't think MBU was ready either. They might be bringing this to a game four. Still 40 seconds remaining. Tendo wants to close it out, but Mokolov is there to break it in the midfield. Mokolov, this constant force of nature, breaking apart these plays, intercepting the passes. Tendo trying to get this in. Still stolen away. CMU is doing their best to knock this one away. Deep into the side of MBU, one more opportunity may arise, and CMU is not going to let it happen. Roadrunner playing the game of their life. Okolov once yeah, again on the backfield. Roadrunner is a veteran from NECC and definitely a solid player not to be counted out. But MBU with zero seconds left on the clock. In game three, down by one goal. Can they bring it to overtime? Mocha Love shuts that one down, but another attempt comes from the Blue Phoenix. From the left side wall, Stooley up, but Mocha shuts it down. Game three goes to CMU Green. Mocha, an absolute powerhouse in the last 30 seconds of that game, preventing any kind of offensive play from MBU. And just like that, my perspective, my opinion is shattered. CMU finds so much aggression, finds so much play in this game that I felt was completely in the bag from game one. Yeah, uh, definitely an epiphany from our perspective. Seeing MBU be so dominant, get a 6-1 victory game two. Uh, I don't exactly remember the scoreline in game, or sorry, game one was 6-1. Game two, I don't remember the scoreline, but it wasn't as close as this one came down to the wire. And CMU takes the win off of Mocha Love's goal and Tendo's mistake. I think uh, game two was also a 3-2. It was just in favor of MBU instead. No, it was a 4-2. They got the uh, last goal at the very end. Yeah, but, it, was, uh, it was definitely not as close. It didn't feel as close as this one I did. I always get thrown off a little bit by these teams that I feel like CMU is the same kind of team that we were playing with last time is they're one of the teams that plays from behind. Well, they are very much based around reading their opponent. They're very much based around dissecting the defense, recognizing where you can get those opportunities. And that's always so hard to figure out, especially for a team like MBU that's so fast, that's so based around building this momentum, building this like disruptive style of gameplay. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting to have a team who's better to play while behind. When your mechanics haven't changed, your your rotation shouldn't have changed. Like, it's interesting for me to see a team who's better while down. I guess the pressure, you know, when 
when the game is on the line, CMU, they're in their prime, as they say. Tendo putting a shot on net. Bob shutting it down. Just a different perspective than what I'm used to. My team just normally loses, and that's it. <laughs> I guess that's uh, kind of the difference between the people who tilt and the people who respond well to pressure. That's very fair. And clutch situations are... Uh, are not hard to come by from CMU as Roadrunner finishes off the pinch from Bob from a defensive play to a quick offensive transition. I don't know yeah, why Roadrunner's I was there, already but I... in position. Yeah, I don't know why I was there, but I don't hate it. I think he was stealing boost, just already caught kind of out of position and said, you know what, I'm going to take boost. Let's see if we get a pinch out. And just like that, on the board, CMU ahead for the second time this series. Now... You know, that's, uh, they have not lost a game from being ahead, but there's a pretty small sample size to work with on that. Yeah, out of, out of the three games, uh, the two games that they, or the one game that they've been ahead at all, that they won. So, I mean, I guess they're batting a 1,000. Let's see if that continues in game number four here. Tendo trying to find a teammate out in the middle, but Stooley and Blue Phoenix a little tepid to jump in so quickly like they were in game number one. I, I think I, they're playing on their heels. I feel like MBU is starting to show respect. This is something you're not used to, but just like that, Stoli getting the counterattack off of the passing play. And it, you, you've got to be a little careful about how much respect you give. Blue Phoenix and Stoli, they've showed that they can be a really heavy offensive squad, but if you start being a little bit more trepidatious, a little more tentative, you can lose a lot of that intimidation factor. Oh, absolutely. And I think what works for them is that pressure. Like, yeah, they may score a couple, but we're going to score a lot more if we keep this up. It's hard to stop them when you've got an SSL tournament winner, a GC tournament winner against the only one showing is a diamond tournament winner. Uh, you're, that's just the levels that we see here. It's going to be a lot harder to uh, keep up with that level of play. But if they go back and they wait for CMU to start the plays, they can definitely make plays and have them develop as they've shown in game two or three and four. Blue Phoenix trying to find an opportunity, a little bit of friendly fire. Stooley in position though, trying to get the read on that angle. Mokolov cuts it off. CMU's recognizing they can't let these plays develop freely. They've got to cut off the angles. That might be the adjustment that we've been seeing. Yeah, is one more up. game here. Oh! Airmail denied. Shot down. Tendo coming back once again. Blue Phoenix gets a demo on Bob. Mocha almost centers out the stoolie. Is somebody going to get back to challenge that? AZ Roadrunner is going to be able to do that and try to find a pinch. Not able to do so, but has the boost to continue the pressure. Tendo up quicker than Mocha. Mocha Love in the center, ready for a pass from Bob. But Tendo just lets that one go in on the other side, but Roadrunner shuts it down twice in a row, back to back. Mocha not able to get there, doesn't have the boost, unfortunately. Blue TV going to try and get this one away, broken up by the defender. Out to Blue Phoenix, Blue Phoenix fakes it, gives it to Tendo, Tendo sets it downfield, chasing this one, not able to find the target just yet, but going to pressure the high ball. Roadrunner gets out to the corner. Stooley is still there though, picks up the pass. A little bit of the no chat as that is broken up by his own teammate. Stooley contesting. Blue Phoenix is there. The pass out to Stooley once more, playing this slow, letting the beat happen. They're ready to punch this one through with the air dribble. Fancy styling, not able to find the shot. AZ Roadrunner sending this one downfield over to MBU. Neither of these teams finding any purchase on the offense of this game. Yeah, what's interesting to me is that game number one, we felt like MBU could do no wrong anywhere on the net. They could shoot it on net with power. This game, I've noticed a lot more just misses off the post, off the crossbar. They're not as consistent. I think they're still trying to find a way to beat this team as, you know, as a team. But I think what's going to be their saving grace is going to be their individual plays and their mechanical skill. I completely agree with you. And I think part of it too comes down to if you're mentally giving this team some respect, if you're mentally allowing for AZ Roadrunner to take a shot like that, it's going to happen. 
This is incredible. I want to see game one MBU go up against game four CMU and see how that goes. Th this is uh, exactly this what it is. The AC Roadrunner is finding the power on this, is turning into a midfield powerhouse, is honestly putting the entirety of CMU on his back. Oh, Bob up to Mocha Love. Mocha Love trying to find a redirect. It's like a different team. They've switched names. That's They've tricked us all. It's a different <laughs> game. Bob is sitting in net backwards, uses a half lift to go challenge Stooley. Stooley with the ball on his car. Five seconds left, and they're down by one. Once again, we see zero time on the, goal, on the clock, and they tie it up this time. Tendo puts it away. This is absolutely astronomical. Tendo may have saved the series for their team. MBU, if they take this overtime, they move all the way into the finals. Mocha Love and Tendo on the kickoff. Tendo passes it back to Stooley, allows him to take it. Roadrunner up just as quick. Not something we would have seen in game number one. They're throwing off this uh, MBU team. Great pass from Tendo, but nobody there to follow up. I think what's happening is that MBU got comfortable in game one and two. And now game here, game four, they're trying to readjust from CMU showing their stuff and great defensive play from Roadrunner out to a great pass. Nobody's going to be able to get up there, but Tendo pushes it to the side. Mocha can challenge this, and I think he will. He will. He keeps it on the side wall here. As Tooley is trying to find a shot, but not able to as Bob 50s him in the air. It's just a different team. This is complete. They are built differently than they were in game one. That shot ripping off the post. So, so yeah, unfortunate. In an awkward position, can't go to the net to help his team because if he went through, he would have hit the ball. But he's got to stay back and just wait for his teammates to clear. And he does that just so perfectly. Roadrunner sends one mid. Not ready for it was Tendo. Nobody there to clear. Bob finally gets a touch on it. Roadrunner follows up but gets beat. And Mocha. Bob and Roadrunner now on their defensive half. Going to keep it going over the net is Mocha who passes over to Roadrunner. Blue Phoenix cuts that off and that's going to be a great save from Bob there in net ready for it and he gets a savior medal. CMU is playing with fire on defense. They're making so many dangerous back passes. Something's got to give here in this overtime and I think it's going to be MBU finding a way to punch through but maybe all of this is a way of drawing the offense forward for MBU and then letting CMU counterattack the way that's been working for them so far this, se this series. Yeah, I mean, at this point, CMU hasn't lost a game in which they held a lead. So don't count them out yet. Tendo trying to find a pass. Blue Phoenix not there quick enough. Takes a boost and accidentally hits it backwards, but Stooley is there. Tendo is not as Bob's able to catch this and can continue the pressure. Great pinch there from Tendo. Just unfortunately, I feel like a lot of solo plays that turn into passes and not shots there from MBU. CMU on the other side of the field. Tendo trying to find some defensive momentum from their own half. Not able to do so, but Stooley says, don't worry, I got it. As Mocha shuts that down once again. I feel like every time we turn around, CMU shutting down an offensive opportunity from MBU and then turning it into one of their own. Just a, flip, a natural flip reset to continue on the pressure. Eh, no big deal. The pizzazz that we were talking about earlier, a little bit of the razzle-dazzle, but it's not force. This is the kind of natural evolution of mechanics. Musty shot from Bob passing that one through. But oh no, the big clear to the open net. The hardest shot in the game is on target. Stooley trying to find a way to double tap. He's like, all right, I just got flip reset on. It didn't go in. But let me show him what's up and and just not able to make that play happen. Bob has to slow down. Roadrunner sitting in that waiting for Bob's play to develop. Stooley and Blue Phoenix in the same spot there. Stooley puts it on net and that is it. CMU Green. GG's. And well played. And thank you for that. That was a lot of fun to watch. Voltage. This was a one seed and a four seed. It was this close on a one seed and a four seed. I can't believe it. This is how good the competition is in the NECC. Yeah, absolutely. They fought to be in the top half of their bracket the whole season. They've played so well. They've done 
everything to prepare themselves for this moment and just well played from CMU and the whole team over there. But MBU take the win and a, uh, that was game five, wasn't it? That was game four. That was only game four. Game four. Game four. Yeah. So game three was the only one to CMU, but just such a fun series to watch as we're going ahead and take it to commercials. And we will be back with an interview from one of the MBU players shortly. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
Welcome back to the NECC Rocket League. I am staged and I am here with the esteemed Voltage Plays. Let's talk about the set that we just saw before that ad break. I, I still haven't processed it. I, I sent us to ad break to try to wrap my head around what we just watched. But man, oh man. MBU starting off hot, getting a 6-1 victory over CMU Green, and it just looked like it wasn't going to be close. And I think what we were saying definitely represented that. And on the other end, we've got CMU Green deciding this wasn't it for them. This isn't how they were going to go out. And they turned it around. They had some great team plays, passing plays, great just beating the offensive pressure. And overall, just fantastic game from CMU Green, just not enough to overcome the mechanical powerhouse that is MBU. I think a lot of it does come down to those mechanics. And one of the things that we started to see when CMU started to come back, when they started to find their footing in this match, is AZ Roadrunner and Mokolov finding some of those mechanics. We, You didn't see them turn into a lot of like plays that were resulting in goals, but you saw it turn into things that reversed the momentum, reversed the ability to have MBU having complete control. And that was, you saw a lot of flip resets, you saw a lot of the air dribbles, you saw a lot of the stalls and the carries and things, especially in the midfield out of AZ Roadrunner and Mocha Love. And that's not to discount Bob, Bob was doing the same thing, but it was more apparent that when everyone started pulling their own weight, that's when CMU came into the game. Yeah, not to discount Bob, Bob turning a defensive play to an offensive drive using a flip reset, and then on his very next touch, musties from the sidewall to try to find a teammate mid i mean the man showed mechanics and said i can hang with this mbu team and his teammates really came through to support him in a lot of big plays game four zero seconds left stoli getting a goal to send us in to like to send us into overtime where they could win that outright in game four other than that zero second goal if the time stopped when it hit zero we're, we were going to game five, and it could have been such a different storyline than we have now. We're actually going to hear from Tendo here talking about that game. That's Tendo from MBU, one of the definite dominant forces in that game, turning that into yeah. I, I, such a strong team, such a strong pressure game. Yeah, absolutely. He was He was the one who... Wasn't always up in the air every time, but when he got a touch on the ball, it was a solid mechanical touch to either move his team forward to stop or to stop the other team or CMU from coming back the other way. All right, so we have Tendo here in the studio. How are you doing, Tendo? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? I am doing, doing great. Well. So question that's on my mind. What happened after game one? Uh... I guess our pace kind of slowed down a bit. I mean, we were trying to, we knew we could outpace them a bit, but we were mainly trying to find more passing plays in the middle, which we've been working on that, which comms and stuff are a little bit off on that. But other than that, we've been just trying to just do a little more passing plays, you know, get a little more creative. All right. So w was this actually like after game one, after the performance that you had, was this kind of more of like a developmental game for you? Uh, kind of, but not really. I mean, we, we, we don't, we didn't underestimate them any, by any means. They just caught us good on that third game. But I mean, we, we've kind of struggled. We can always usually keep up with pace for the most part, but like we, we've been trying to like really pa pass out of almost everything just so we can always have possession and always be able to counter or be able to do something with it. Just be a threat. Okay. That makes a lot of sense to me now. Cause game one, Y'all didn't concern yourself as much with passing. It was, I've got a shot. Let me put it on net and see what I can do with it. And that was the 6-1 scoreline. But then I think back to game two, game three, and even game four, I see a lot more trying to find an opportunity to find a teammate instead of just throw it at the net to find a better opportunity to score. So that makes a lot more sense now that you say it out loud. Yeah. Um, on, that, on that bit, um, game three, is there anything that y'all like as i felt like y'all struggled getting up to the ball to contest the aerial plays from cmu that we didn't see in game one or two or even most of four 
Um, so that game, they really had us. I mean, like one of our biggest things and, and one of the biggest things in Rocket League is getting them boost prone or having them like really low on boost. And that's like one of our biggest attributes to our team is we always play really quick. We're usually up in their face trying to bump them, you know, just cause havoc. But in that game, they really kind of pushed up the pressure and then started grabbing our boost, you know, leaving us in those really awkward situations that we had to either, you know, go for an aerial with 20 boost or like defend an awkward shot with that much boost. But yeah, they did a good job on game three at uh, holding us through that perspective. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that turned into a, quite a fun series to watch. And you guys were definitely able to maintain your cool in most situations um if we look for the bracket real sec real quick you guys move on from this and play the winner of boise state going up against csudh um have you played both of these teams or uh i think we have i know we played boise i don't know about i think we played the other team too i'm not for sure on that but i mean we're gonna be looking at like even with the first game that we played in the quarters, we looked at the same way, you know, just trying to get those three wins and get the dub basically. But yeah. Do, do you, does your team do any kind of special preparation for a series? And like, uh, how do you handle that? If you do, uh, we, we try to get a little hype, you know, try to boost our morale a little bit, try to get, you know, the energy at a really high peak, but you know, other than that, I mean, not nothing really. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, do you think that, like, let, let's say we had a uh, yeah, RLCS collegiate squad or something like that come in that you were going to be playing against, do you think that there would be any kind of special preparation you do for it, or is it just always play our best game? Uh, I'm more about playing your best, because, like, if you look at different games with different perspectives, like, compared to an RLCS to this team we just played, you know, there's going to be some differences, but as long as you kind of look at it as in like, you know, we got to go out there and give our best, you know, can't go without trying, you know, stuff like that. That's just kind of how I look at that through my mentality. It's a good way to look yes. I like that. So my last question is going to be y'all are first place in your division with nine and O uh, Boise state. Their only loss is to you guys. And then CSUDH, the third, uh, third place in this division is currently five and four, almost even. So you and Boise state have really, stood out as a like as the top two in this division in the regular season um is there are you worried the only loss from boise state that boise state has is from you guys and i believe if i can look uh that was a game that was closer than anything else you guys have yeah they're uh they're a good team they're gonna be uh they're gonna be wanting revenge that's for sure but uh no i think we're going to look at it the same way, just try to play our best, play our game, and just beat them at that. All right, Tendo, thank you for joining us. Good luck next week in the finals on the 26th. You can catch it here on twitch.tv slash NECC underscore esports. Make sure you check in, tune out, root for Tendo and the NBU team as they fight for finals. And this is going to be the end of this game. We're going to go ahead and head on to Floof and possibly Lars here. And to the next game, we will see you shortly. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
Welcome back, everybody. My name is Voltage, and next to me, I have Foof here for the next game of University of Alabama Huntsville going up against Northern Kentucky. This is going to be one of the semifinals for the West Division champions. Uh, so as you've been here all season, and I've been watching from the Twitch stands, as they say, uh, what stands. can you tell me about either of these two teams? Well, this is a strange thing here, Voltage, because, you know, UAH, the, the Chargers, they're coming off of a bye. So that's expected. The number one team, they've come in, they've been hot all season. They had a couple of drops at the end of the season. They were undefeated at a point and then fell to a team that we felt like at the time they should have beat 3-0. And so you wondered, maybe it was just overlooking some competition. Then they dropped another one. And now they're coming into playoffs with a kind of a little bit of a pulled back approach, I'd say. And so strangely, you look across the pitch and... They technically got a forfeit, right? And so they technically had a bye week. Neither of these teams have had to really play recently. So it's been that small bit of laid back and just trying to uh, just kind of read and think about what those other teams are going to do. So this is going to be a very unusual playoff series, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. It's a little bit different than what it was orchestrated to be. We tried to find a way to write the best stories and this story is turning out to be a unique one for sure very much uh, regular season record for university of alabama huntsville is going to go in seven and two regular season record for northern kentucky five and four quite a little bit of a difference here when you look at it but both teams going positive 500 um yeah forfeit how did these te teams do against each other is what I'm looking at It was right in now. week six. UAH beat Northern Kentucky Esport, University Esports, mind you, 3-2. So this was a tightly contested series, but it was a couple weeks back, and it was 3-2. This was the beginning of that slow downfall that you saw of UAH slowly kind of either, uh, either opposition adjusting to them or just slowing down play. The thing is, I I'm looking at my notes right now. It was just they started cold. They came back in game three and four and had a chance in that one we saw them lose in week eight. And so my big thing that I have circled here is they have to start fast. If UAH can start fast, the Chargers are that good of a team and they can get that snowball rolling. It will be really hard for any team to stop them, let alone a five and four team that they've already beaten. Yeah, so I was looking at this record that UAH have and you said they lost to Boise State one game. The other game comes from the six seed of seven, Montana, currently going five and four in the regular season. Five and, and four teams are dangerous. The, yeah. If the Montana team, who has the same record as Northern Kentucky, can come through and get a win on the number one team, it's definitely a possibility here for this Northern Kentucky team to get a win. We're looking for consistency in team plays rather than the one-offs, I think is what we're really looking for from them to come through and get this win. On the other side, UAH needs to play their solid game, their game they know that they've been playing all season, and they've got this. So it's really up to these two teams and how they want to write this story and continue on towards the finals. I got to ask you, Voltage, we just came off of a heck of a series, CMU! Who would have known? That was such a really good NBA team, and I expected them kind of to steamroll. That was insane, right? Yeah. After game one, Stage and I looked at each other, and I, we both said, <laughs> what are we going to talk about, man? But then CMU writes the comeback story that almost happened. So they close. were zero so seconds going into game five and not there. It, it was incredible and a lot of fun to cast and I enjoyed every second of it. I've sat back for most of the season here and uh, I said, I want to cast one semifinal one. game. I'm not, I'm not even going to put my hat <laughs> in for finals. I haven't been here. And I said, I, I don't want to say, yeah, the only season I didn't cast was season or, you know, spring of 21. Mm -hmm. So I decided I'm going to, I'm going to throw my hat in. I'm going to get a game in. And then I move on to that game, which was just far and away so exciting. You and, picked a good one. It makes me miss casting for sure. 
<laughs> well, that is, sure. That's the beauty of it, man. You get games like that. You get players like that and you get stories like that. And so, you know, coming back around is we have this story, these two story teams coming in with a very different regular season. I mean, we've already talked about it. UAH, these guys were the... Uh, I, I want to call them front runner, but you know, they're the chargers. I don't want to make horse buns all day, but they were the front runner all season seven and oh dropped the game. And then it was just kind of what happens. Are they in a free fall? Is this the beginning of the end? Then you look at across the pitch and it's a five and 14 that has seen trials and tribulations. They've already been beaten by this team, but they are resilient. I got to tell you, Herbold. and so it is going to be up to one of those teams to not only be resilient early on in the series, because someone's going to get up in a hurry. Both of these offenses, tend to score in bunches it's who can reply to those goals those quick opportunities and take advantage of those yeah one last thing that i'm going to leave you on with how you're describing it i watch a lot of hockey and the vegas golden knights are a team who are known for after getting scored on using a lot more energy than almost any other team in the league to even it back up or take the lead back and I think that's what these teams are going to have to do with how you're describing it. Five and four teams have beaten this UAH team, and uh, and they're going to be looking to do it again tonight as we're going to head back to a commercial. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and head into this champion West Division semifinals. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the NECC, and you're watching NECC playoffs, so don't go anywhere. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it. 